I've been a doctor for over 30 years, and I never imagined that in my professional life um, I would, in, in this uh, really rich country, and people always talk about Britain being the sixth or the seventh richest country in the world, that there would be people who actually suffer because they cannot get adequate uh, money to buy the food that they need. One of the drivers of this research was some of the debates in the media around the labelling of food bank users and some of the terms were things like these people were living like animals or not being able to cook or spending all their money on tattoos was one particular quote and these quotes were often from politicians or media commentators and that uh, encouraged us to look at the real lives of people using food banks. two key components to this project. Um, the first one is looking at survey data from government surveys. We've also conducted some qualitative work where we've visited four food banks across the city. Juice. There's no juice. This exists because the government's sort of sanctioning so many people at the moment and the people are getting sanctioned. There's bedroom charges, there's people losing the works and the jobs. So there's nothing really. So if we weren't around to supply the needs, what would they get? Nothing. So that's why we're here. I think one of the striking things about the recession and the changes in the welfare system in the UK is the inevitability of food insecurity, really. And this is where welfare organisations and churches have started to fill the gap. So food banks, either as part of networks or just set up by individuals, often attached to churches, uh, spontaneously organising food welfare. At the University of Manchester, one of the surprising developments is the students themselves have taken it upon them to set up their own food bank, such was their concerns about food insecurity in Manchester. Survey evidence suggests that there's quite a high level of malnutrition in the UK. Around 3 million people are estimated to suffer uh, from malnutrition. More than a million older people, those aged 65, are also estimated to suffer from malnutrition. Oh, your sister, oh, she got out of hospital now. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're collecting for your sister as well. Yeah. Will you be able to carry, how are you going to carry it? They're to take a taxi. Right. Some people that comes in um, is really, broken and don't really want to come down feel ashamed of accessing the food bank but we, we reassure them and you know we let them know that we're here to help so one of the issues around food insecurity is that the government's got a responsibility under international le legislation to provide adequate food for its citizens and there's questions around whether they are doing that in relation to changes in welfare My work as a general practitioner, of course, um, in one of the most deprived areas of Manchester, um, has really exposed me to uh, this whole issue of poverty. And I've only recently become aware, mainly because um, I ask people now about uh, how they cope, because I think that uh, it is true that there have been quite a large uh, amount of welfare cuts. Um, and so people are, in my, in my, from what I see, are living very much on the margins. And so uh, it doesn't take much for them to sort of fall below some, some arbitrary line that you put. People turn up for the first time here in tears with, because they're so ashamed because they've never gone to a food bank and they've never needed to rely on anybody. And they, they didn't have themselves in that pigeonhole of someone who needed to use a food bank or get that kind of support. One of these is for your sister, mm. one is yours, one of these is your sister, yeah. one's yours, one of these, mm. one's yours. I think the political language often framed in terms of blame in relation to food bank users is misplaced. So what we've got in the UK is considerable levels of malnutrition, 
considerable levels of food insecurity driven by a range of factors from changes in welfare, loss of employment, breakdown in relationships, but also it seems we've got a normalisation of food aid in the UK. The evidence that we've gained by working on this project has been really helpful um, in getting an estimate of food insecurity in the UK. The social responsibility for us is really about how we as academics and we as an institution make a difference to our society. And when we talk about making a difference, um, we look at different things that we do and, and, and try and assess and measure the impact on that. So, for example, we, we want to emphasise aspects of our research which actually make a difference to our local community and also to some of the global challenges we face. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Watch your step when you're going up.